Hi guys, welcome back to my YouTube channel and welcome back to another Sims 4 speedboarding video or welcome to the channel if you're new here. So in today's video I'm going to be building in the new world of Henford on Bagley which is the new world which we got in the latest expansion pack which came out yesterday, the Sims 4 Cottage Living and I'm going to be building a big family like generations farm. It's big as you'll see as we get into the video. So this farm is built on a 50 by 40 lot in the neighbourhood which I believe is called Old New Henford. I'm not gonna lie, I literally got the pack and just went straight into building. Well actually no, that is a lie because I did actually spend two hours going through build and buy it and the debug menu but after I did that, I just went straight into building. So I haven't actually done any gameplay yet but I just know, I just know that this is going to be my most favourite expansion pack and that's a bold statement to make. But this, this kind of pack is right up my street and yeah, I'm just so in love with this build as well. I honestly think this is probably one of my best builds that I've ever done. It's definitely one of my favourites and that is also a very bold statement to make. So I hope you guys like it. I had so much fun building it. It took me a very long time to build it but I'm just so happy that it's done and I can just share it with everyone. And I'm excited for people to play in it because I just basically wanted to create a farm using all the new gameplay items that we actually got in the new expansion pack. So, in this farm, to kind of give a summary, there's obviously like little bits here and there, but just to summarise, I really wanted there to be a massive farmer field where your sims can, you know, grow all their watermelons or their mushrooms or all their fruit and veg. There's a massive area, loads of space for it. That is in, I think it's in the bottom right hand corner. And then above that, we have a little area for chickens. I put two chicken coops down and then there is also an area for a cow and a llama or two cows two llamas they basically just come in a shed and you can choose either to buy a cow or a llama but i wanted to include two sheds because i wanted you to be able to if you wanted to to have one of each animal and then as well as that there is a massive pond as you can see going through the whole middle of this build which was pretty much my first time playing around with a pool toll which probably wasn't smart to, to, to make this my first time playing around, but we got there in the end. I Again, I love the way this house turned out. And then as well as that, there's so many different things from different packs that just kind of come together really nicely in this build. But moving on from that and actually talking a little bit more about the family that's actually going to be living here in my save file because this house is going to be for my save and this is the first house in the new world of Henford on Bagley for my save file, which is just extremely exciting to be honest with you but talking about the family so it consists of five sims a cat and a dog and then i'll be counting chickens and llamas and cows i don't know if we are but they're here as well if you want to count them. they don't actually take up a household slot by the way if you haven't got the pack yet which i'm kind of happy about because then if you wanted to you could have eight sims and then if you really wanted to you could have eight cows there's no limit, the limit does not exist. But anyway, moving on from that and actually getting back to the family. So the family, the kind of idea that I had in my head the whole time that I was building this is this farm has kind of been passed down through the generations. So the grandma that lives in this house, she was also born in this house. She's probably never gonna leave this house. She will probably tragically die in this house. That is the kind of idea that I had. And I kind of felt like maybe it's going to continue, like the generations are going to continue and so either the toddler or the child are going to kind of continue on with this household's legacy of being this really big farm in Henford on Bagley. So I was kind of thinking that maybe they do all the different competitions, that's why they've got such a massive vegetable patch and they, you know, every single, I think it's Sunday or Saturday, one of the two, there's competitions for the best chicken and the best, I think it's the best cow could be wrong there again i basically know nothing about gameplay in this pack like whatsoever and then there is like biggest vegetables and whatnot i imagine that they participate in it every single weekend and every single weekend they just happen to win they're really good at what they do they're really good little farmers and they're just a really sweet little family like you'd want to be mates with them it's the kind of idea that i have in my head now i was also thinking that one of the parents i'm not sure which one honestly it could be either or but i was thinking that they actually work for the news agents which is in finchwick now there's not a news agents in finchwick but let's just pretend in our head that there is or just kind of like a news article place basically i imagine that they write the newsletter every single week for Henford and Bagley. I don't even think there is a newsletter, <laughs> but I like the idea in my head that there is because in small little villages in England, you normally get a news, not, not a newspaper. I mean, you do get a newspaper as well. You normally get a newsletter through your door literally every single week. And even if you don't ask for it, they still deliver it to you. And I imagine that this sim 
is part of the newsletter and you know goes around and puts them through people's letter boxes and all what not i just i had a lot of fun when i was building this and i had a lot of fun imagining this family and yeah also i do want to mention if i seem a little bit what you're talking about like you're talking actual mush um it's because i basically haven't slept this pack came out at six o'clock greenwich mean time yesterday and i i built this and it took me i think i had around about nine ish hours of recorded footage so that was a lot and also i wasn't looking at anything when i was building this so i was basically just building what i thought looked good <laughs> so i had no reference pictures to go off i didn't really have a straight idea in my head all i knew that i wanted for this whole entire farm was i wanted there to be a cow shed a llama shed a massive vegetable patch chicken coops and a massive river in the middle and that's what it ends up being. I really like the fact actually that work and family are kind of separated because I'm thinking this of like a point of view as these families are farmers, like in day in, day out, they're farming, you know, they're doing all the farmy kind of stuff. I don't really know what goes into being a farmer if I'm being completely honest with you, but you know, they're a farmer. Once they finish their farming duties for the day, they can just go onto the left hand side of the house and they can kind of forget about it. So it kind of separates their work life from their house life. Maybe I'm just thinking a little bit too much into it and maybe I do just need to go to sleep. But I really like the idea that it's kind of separated into like all the chickens and cows and whatnot are on the right hand side. And then the family, house and everything else is on the left. I just really like it. But anyway, moving on from that and actually talking about what I'm doing right now. So as you can see, I'm just going around this massive pen, which is the cow and the llama shed. And just going in and just decorating it with loads of different debug menu items now. The pack came out yesterday at six o'clock and if you're familiar with my channel and you've watched a few of my videos before you will know that I normally use a mod called the Better Build Buy which is by Twisted Maxi and it basically organises debug. Now obviously the pack came out yesterday, I started building this yesterday and so I don't have the updated version, I don't believe there's an updated version for the mod yet. And so if you're wondering why I keep on putting out all these little strange rooms from my saved rooms, basically when I went into the like the game at first hand and I was looking at all the different debug menu items and build and buy, I basically created these little separate rooms with all the different debug menu items that I think I'd want to use within the build. One reason being, I hate when you activate bb.show hidden objects and then your whole entire catalogue is just filled with debug menu items. I mean, to be fair, you asked for it because you entered the cheat. But I hate that you can't turn it off. But normally with the Twisted Maxi mod, you can just kind of filter it on and off. But once you access the cheat, you can't actually turn it off until you actually come out of your game, you know, exit and then load back in. Now, I didn't want to be doing that when I was building this. And so I basically created these little saved rooms with all the different debug menu items that I wanted to use. And I just kept on pulling them out throughout the video. So if you're wondering what they are, that is what it is. I actually used to do this before this mod existed because this mod has only been around maybe the past year or so maybe less than that and previously it was the same thing i hated having to scroll through the debug menu and then not being able to get rid of all the debug menu stuff and so i usually just save so much stuff to my saved rooms like in my previous videos you'll see me put out like bathroom clutter or kitchen clutter or garden stuff and whatnot highly recommend it if i mean if you're not someone that likes to play with mods I would highly recommend saving all different debug menu items and live, live edit menu items to your saved rooms. You don't have to access the cheat, you don't have to type the cheat in every time you want to actually get something, and it just saves you a whole lot of time. And the catalogue is not clogged up when you do it, but anyway, as you can see, moving on from that, I've actually just started doing this little pond area and just kind of landscaping it with all these different, is it grass? I don't even know what it's called, bushes? Just plants so let's just, let's just go with plants so one thing that i actually really like with the new pond tool is we've actually got these kind of new water filters so the one that i use is kind of like leaves and sticks that's kind of fallen into the water and they're just you know they're just staying in the pond they are there to stay it's very realistic and if you're familiar with my channel you'll know that i really like realism in my builds but talking about two things that i want to mention before i forget because you might be wondering firstly the little wheel that i placed on the side of the house it moves so when you actually go into live mode if you do want to download this house gallery the wheel actually moves it actually makes it seem like it's an actual little mill it is adorable also by the way i've taken so many screenshots of this build i don't know how long the end video will actually be once i've added in the screenshots currently without them it's 31 minutes this build did take me quite a while but it is quite a big build and then secondly the bridge 
So I have playtested this whole entire build. As always, I playtest every single one of my builds before I upload them into the gallery. And I playtested this one and everything works absolutely fine. I think I ran into one small problem and I'm pretty sure it was something like my sim couldn't sit down on a chair because it was too close to the wall. Something like that, it was something so minor. But let me tell you, when you do a build using stuff that's not meant to be how it is, if that makes any sense, I'll expand on that in a second. But when you just kind of experiment within the game, just how the game actually functions, and then when you actually came around to play testing it and everything works, oh my god, it is such a relief because you don't have to change anything. But the little bridge, it works. So what I mean by like the game functions and like playing around with it, Basically, what I did to create it is I actually created a room and then I built a second level and then I deleted the bottom level so then the floor for the second or the ceiling for the bottom, hopefully you're following along with me. Hopefully you are because I don't know how else to explain that but basically I deleted the, the bottom level and then I got the top level and I pulled it down to the height of the bridge and then that way I don't actually have to have a foundation underneath because I could have just put a normal kind of foundation but then there would have been something underneath the bridge kind of like a brick foundation or the little kind of stilts that we got from Island Living and Snowy Escapes. I didn't want that. I wanted it to actually look like that bridge was the bridge and that bridge ends up being a very functional bridge. I tested it a bunch of times just to make sure and it's completely functional. Now I do want to give credit where credit is due because this was not my idea and I actually saw this on Twitter last night before I started building it. So I actually saw this on Pug Owns Twitter. If you don't know who Pug Owns is, you really need to check them out because they are... S Let me tell you, if you're ever looking for a cat or a dog or to be fair if you're looking for like a horse or something go onto their gallery and just have a browse because I'm pretty sure I have favorited every single animal that they have uploaded to the gallery they do amazing paintings of pets in the sims 4 and they also a builder but yeah I actually saw that idea on their twitter last night and I mean give credit where credit is due not my original idea also on that I will actually link their Twitter down below just in case you're curious because I actually do highly recommend I'm not just saying that I do actually recommend that you choose check them out because their paintings of animals are absolutely phenomenal I've never seen anything like it but anyway moving on from that and actually talking about what I'm doing right now so as you would have noticed I actually originally went into the lot started building the main very main plane structure of the house did a couple of windows did a door and then just kind of sodded off to the other side of the lot and carried on building the like the animal area but I really wanted to lay down the foundations because I knew, like I said, when I went into this build, I knew that I wanted there to be like a lake or a pond in the middle. I knew that I wanted a certain amount of space for the animals and a certain amount of space for the vegetable patch. And so I basically, once I built the main structure of the house originally, I then went to the other side and then just kind of started doing it, the like the little lake pond thing. And then I started putting down the foundations for where the cow shed is going to be and the chicken coops and... I then kind of forgot, oh yeah, you've actually got a house to build because I was so carried away with all the new items that we got and just playing around with everything and just going through all the different swatches and just seeing how everything goes together. But I did actually, for a second, forget that there was actually a house on this lot. And so as you can see, I've actually come back to the house and I've started doing the landscaping. I do actually do the windows for the back of the house in a minute as well as the floor plan i was a little bit silly this time because if you're familiar with my channel you'll know that normally whenever i go into a video i start with the main structure the build i then will do the floor plan and the windows and the landscaping garden and then we're on into interior didn't really go to plan this time with this build because i was kind of all over the place where i was trying to figure out like how everything was going to look and I just got a little bit carried away, but it's okay to get carried away sometimes. I am having a lot of fun with this pack and I can't wait to actually play it later on within this weekend. Hopefully I can play it. I've actually got something very exciting coming up this weekend. It's actually my birthday. I'm turning 23, which makes me feel some kind of way. But moving on from that, hopefully I'll get to play it. But anyway, as you can see, I added a load of different wisteria onto the exterior of the house. Now, I love wisteria so much. It's so pretty. It actually reminds me of my childhood home, the one that I grew up in. I moved out, I say childhood home, I only actually moved out about six years ago, but I lived in this house the majority of my life. And we had this wisteria both on the front and the back of the house. And in the summertime, it just used to bloom and it was this beautiful lilac color. And it just used to make me so happy just being able to open up my windows and there was literally just purple flowers basically coming into my bedroom and it just reminded me of that. To be honest, this whole entire patch reminds me of where I live so much and it's so nice to be able to go into The Sims 4 and actually see a world that actually represents where you live because I do live in the British countryside. 
I live in little old England. I, even though, to be fair, Henfield and Bagley is actually based off the Cotswolds, I believe. Even though I don't live there, <laughs> I live in a kind of similar kind of surroundings. So you know, like kind of like the world around you, and you've got a little village, and you kind of got like the little woody. That's basically where I live, and it's just really nice to see something like what you're familiar with in The Sims 4. I do love an American suburban house, don't get me wrong, but I'm also very excited for my next upcoming builds in this world because I'm just I love building the old cottage. I do, I really do like building cottages in The Sims 4. We was restricted to Windenburg and then maybe push the boat out to Glimmerbrook for cottages, but now we've got this whole new world and it's just very exciting. But anyway, moving on from that, as you can see, I've actually now moved on to the second, like the back part of the house. And I've actually just kind of got my act together and realized you actually need windows on the back. And so that's what I'm doing. By the way, this wisteria, when you size it up, I would just say be careful because the wisteria is actually in the normal build and buyer. And I didn't realize when you sized it up, part of the leaves come through the wall. Just be wary of that because when I actually came in and I was doing all the wallpaper and the flooring, I saw so many different kind of like greenery coming through the walls and obviously you don't want that in the game and so i tried my best to try and minimize there's a little tiny bit there's like one time that it comes through the wall but it's like a centimeter and it's upstairs in the grandma's room but yeah if you're curious about the wisteria if i mean i'm sure no one's not but i just thought i'd mention it the wisteria when you size it up it does come through the wall it's not the worst thing in the world but i just you know thought i'd mention it now as you can see we've actually moved on into the back garden so I say back garden, the whole thing's a garden, but you know, the actual back garden of the house. So even though we've still got the chicken coops and we've got the animal bit and we've got the vegetable, I still wanted there to be a garden for family time, you know, Sundays, you're having your barbecue or maybe of an evening, everyone wants to sit outside and have dinner together. It's just a really sweet little garden. So in the back garden, I actually did this thing where I actually used the fences and I deleted the floor in and then actually put some kind of like plants landscaping on top of it the screenshots look so good because the light just kind of shines in and it's just the screenshots for this whole entire build are just so pretty but that particular area as well i had a lot of fun taking the screenshots but as well as that we also have some planters on this little kind of like porch bit outside i know you probably don't need any more places to plant stuff in your sims house but maybe they're planting flowers and maybe actually maybe the massive patch of like vegetable patches is for vegetables and herbs and then maybe one of the parents really likes flower arranging because i did also place a flower arranging table who knows maybe they grow their daisies and their roses and all the different kinds of flowers and then also in this little area you kind of go down the terrain and then you kind of get to this little pond area now obviously the pond it's got ducks and it's got swans and it's got crocodiles and it's got all the different things that you basically get in ponds but I also actually wanted your sims to be able to fish. Now we did actually get a new little fishing sign, which is great, but what I found is your sims can only actually fish if there's fish already in the pond, if that makes sense. So your sims would actually have to go outside the world or outside the world, outside their house to actually find fishing spots to fish and then bring them back to them, put them in the pond. I wanted your sims to be able to just go to the back garden and then fish for some fish. So I added one from Debug and the one that I used is a base game fishing post because we actually have multiple for different expansion packs or different game packs that have new fish. So you know like when we got Iron and Living we got loads of new fish in the collection or when we got Vampires we also got a few new fishes. They're kind of locked to a certain post, I think. Now, I'm only saying this because previous times in my own personal gameplay when I've gone through and I've tried to get a sim to complete like fishing collections or fossil collections or whatnot, I found, because I, I do go on online to get help to find certain fish, <laughs> but I found that apparently you have to go to certain different posts in like the world, so you can't get the island living fish in anywhere apart from the world of Sulane. Hopefully that makes sense, but basically, I put a base game one so you could you, you're gonna have a nice variety of fish because there's loads that come with base game but anyway moving on from that as you can see I finally moved on into the inside of this house and I've started off by furnishing the lounge room so in the lounge room I use the new sofa and the new armchair I, I I love this new armchair it's probably my favorite armchair in the whole entire game it is just so nice I mean next to the jungle adventure one but the jungle adventure one I like for purposes for not it being a chair because i use the jungle adventures small little stool in pretty much every single one of my bills it's just such a good item to clutter up and to use and i actually used it outside as well by the animal pens i actually placed one down and then i placed down a bucket and then like a debug brush to make it seem like 
when the cows come out, maybe you want to milk the cow. That's where your sim sits. I'm pretty sure there is actually another debug stall. I'm pretty sure there is anyway, from my memory from watching the trailer a million times, I'm sure a sim actually sits down and actually starts milking a cow and there's like a little debug stall. So that should be in the debug catalog somewhere, but I'm yet to discover it, even though I spent ages going through the debug menu but either way the one that I've actually placed down is actually functional your sims won't actually be able to sit on it and interact with the animals but they can sit on it and I mean they can sit on it and look at the animals if you want them to but I just liked the extra bit of realism but as well as that in the lounge room I also use one of the new fireplaces the new fireplaces are so nice I did actually struggle a little bit trying to pick between the two but I ended up going for the one that's more brick than stone only because the one that I chose kind of looks like it's a log burner and it's got all these little logs on the side and it's just very sweet and it looks very homey and I wanted this house to be very homey and you know family orientated and just just nice like you just want to live here yourself um but also in that room we also have the new three-seater sofa which I believe I might be wrong but I believe it's meant to be a Chesterfield sofa which real life in my experience are not the most comfortable to sit on the leather ones anyway Fabric ones, can't comment because I haven't sat on one, but the Chesterfield sofa, I feel like I know so many people that have got them and they're really uncomfortable, but it's the Sims. Well, you don't have to sit on them. Your Sims have to sit on them. But I mean, do Sims even get comfort moodlets anymore? I can't even remember. I barely even look at moodlets. But besides the point, as well in that room, we also have a bookcase and then the little desk area with the new computer on it. Just in the corner, it's very small and it's very sweet. It's just, it's just cozy in that room. But now, as you can see, I've actually moved on and I've started furnishing the kitchen. And I finally got my hands on the brand new fridge or one of the brand new fridges because there's actually two. There's a wooden one and then there's one that I've used. And the one that I've used, I've been speaking about literally since we've known about cottage living because it was in the trailer and it's a smeg fridge and I would love one in real life, they're really expensive. But I just love this fridge and I've been banging on about it in my voiceover for so long because I always used to, refer, long story short, if you're new here, I always used to refer to the fridge that we got from Country Kitchen Kit as a smeg fridge because it kind of looked like one. But now that is, you can't tell me that's not a smeg fridge. Look at smeg fridge and then look at that, basically the exact same. And it comes in some really nice swatches. But as well as that, as you can see, I've currently actually moved on. I've actually started finishing the dining room. But in the kitchen, I use the new counters and cabinets that we actually got in the pack. Now, I do like them, but I think I actually prefer the country kitchen kit ones better. Maybe that's just me. I don't know. I didn't like that there wasn't more swatches that I would per to eat. No, actually, I'll, I'll retract that statement. There's a lot of swatches, but maybe just not swatches that I would normally tend to pick out. And so I decided to go for kind of like a grey white one with a wooden surface because I feel like that was quite a general kind of counter colour. But there is some completely just swatches that I don't think I'll ever use but maybe I will never say never because you never know but as you can see I've now actually moved on into the dining room and in the dining room I use the new chairs but not the new table because the new table is only for four chairs it's like one of the little singular small circular ones and it's a big family and I'm assuming all of their mates down at Finchwick village come over sometimes for tea and they're gonna need some more seats at the dining table so I added a big table and it's got eight seats in total. Like I said, by the way, again, just to rephrase, I have playtested this whole entire house and everything works absolutely fine. I was a little bit worried that your Sims might have some problems getting around the table, but no, nope, everything's fine. And now I have actually moved on into the hallway. Now this new side table, I'm gonna be using this side table a lot. You're gonna see a lot more of this side table because it is just so nice and it fits so nice and snug into the little area that I placed it. It just, it was made for it if I'm being honest with you. But in this little hallway, it's just kind of like a generic hallway into a house. We've got a side table, chuck your keys and your letters and all your posts down. We've also got a mirror so your sims can make sure that they look okay before they leave the house. I don't know if anyone else always places mirrors in hallways, but it's always something that I seem to do just in case your sim wants to like get a little bit confident before they leave to go to work or school or whatever. There is also an umbrella rack. There is the temperature thing so you can make it hotter or cooler and if the weather in Henfield and Bagley is anything like real British weather gonna need it uh, I say in that actually we're currently going for a heat wave in England I'm, I feel like a lot of people know this because a lot of people have been laughing at how we are coping with this heat wave but British houses are built to keep all of the heat in and once the heat comes in, it's very hard for it to get out, especially, I mean, not even just like excluding myself here, but I live in a very old cottage. Like my house is old, like it's well old. And it's it's extremely hot right now as I'm doing this voiceover. I, yeah, it's, it's very hot. 
but if the weather's like anything like England, you're going to need that thermostat to make it hotter in the winter because it does get very cold in England. But anyway, moving on from that, as you can see, I've actually just quickly done the utility room. So this house does have laundry. There is a washing machine and a tumble dryer. But I did also place one of the little wash tubs outside. I kind of had it in my head that the family would only use the washing machine and the tumble dryer in the winter time and in the summer they would you know wash their clothes outside in the little wash tub and hang it out to dry only in the winter when your clothes can't dry and it's too cold to go out there and get all soapy hands and stuff that they would actually use the washing machine and tumble dryer but i wanted to include it anyway i do love a good utility room in most of my sims houses to be honest with you with all the little hoovers and all the little clutter and ironing boards and stuff like that but now i have actually moved on into I don't even know what to class this as, it's kind of like a little workstation room. So in here we have the woodworking table as well as a sink. There's honestly not much to this room, it was kind of like an awkward shape at the end of the house. And I didn't know what to do with it. But this is the thing, with a lot of English houses, there is a lot of weirdly shaped rooms and there's a lot of... One thing that I wanted to try and include, and I did include it into this house, was a box room, which I've actually now moved on to. So in pretty much every single British house that I've ever been in, Someone always has a box bedroom, which is basically a really small bedroom in the house, the smallest one, and it's basically a box. And you can basically just fit like a single bed in there and like a little side table, maybe it just drawers. Long story short, they're very small and it's very British to have a little box room. And so I really wanted to include one. And as there is a toddler in this house, I decided to make the box bedroom into the toddler's room because toddlers, they don't need that much. Everything that's in this room, they need. Like everything that they would want is in this room. Also, I do want to mention before I forget, there is actually a high chair placed downstairs in the dining room in kind of like this nice little area. I did kind of forget when I was actually originally furnishing the dining room, but if you do decide to download this build of a gallery, there is one already in this house. You won't have to add one in. And also with potties, there is one in this bedroom and there's actually one downstairs in the downstairs bathroom. Now I did actually decide to cut out the footage of all the bathrooms just because the footage was so long by itself and I didn't want to add an extra like minute or two just of bathrooms and bathrooms are quite repetitive but you will see them in the screenshots. It was either I cut out the bathrooms or I cut out the hallway and I really like the hallway in this house and so I decided to keep in the hallway upstairs which you'll see at the very end and then cut out the bathrooms. Hopefully you guys don't mind but yeah there is a little toddler potty downstairs so if the toddler's downstairs and they haven't got much movement skills and they need a wee they're not going to weed themselves basically by the time they get upstairs because there's one downstairs for them but moving on from that as you can see i've actually now moved on into the child's room and i've just started decorating it so i just had to use this new wallpaper somewhere in the build i did actually use i think i've used all the new wallpapers because there is actually two which is the same wallpaper but it's kind of like a left version and a right version you'll see it in the parents room what i'm talking about but it's kind of like these different like floral patterns and you can kind of like mix and match them together there is also this one I love this. I'm going to be using this in so many future builds. It is this most adorable little wallpaper with all these little bunnies and mushrooms and acorns and just like leaves and naturey things and it's just adorable. I had to use it and so I used it in the kids room. I actually paired it with a cats and dogs single bed which is actually a really good single bed. I don't find myself using it that often but it is very good. And then also in this room I placed down the dollhouse, a toy box, a drawing station and then a teddy bear. I had it in my head that this family is like no computers in your room. There is one computer in the house downstairs and you can use it after you've done all your homework. That was the kind of idea I had. A lot of the time I placed laptops into children's and teenagers rooms but for this family I just felt like they, would, they wouldn't be that kind of family. There is one computer and you use it if you've done your homework. But anyway, moving on from that, as you can see, I've now moved on into the next bedroom, which is the grandma's bedroom. So in here, I went for this base game wallpaper, which actually paired really nicely, again, with this cats and dogs bed. The cats and dogs bed is a four poster bed and I use it in pretty much every single grandparent's house or grandparent's bedroom there is, just because it's so, it's just so grandparentsy, isn't it? It's just, it, it looks like a grandparent would own this bed. And I used it in this yellow swatch and then I also paired it with the cats and dogs armchair. And then in this room as well, there is a chest of drawers, there is a mirror. And then there is also a little bookcase where your sims can sit down and read a book. Oh, and I also placed down the new, what's it called? Embroidery station thing. You know, like with Nifty Knitting, we actually got these little baskets where your sims can just place them into their pockets and they can like knit. 
There is now one for embroidery. I'll place it down in that room as well. But now moving on to the last room in this house. This is the parents' bedroom. It's in here. You can see what I mean by the wallpaper, by the way. You see how the wallpaper kind of changes. It's not the exact same swatch. It's basically like a left version of this pattern and then a right version. And you can kind of like pair them together. I really like that small little detail because I feel like this wallpaper might get a little bit too repetitive if you just have the one pattern all over the wall. But anyway, in this room, I actually used a new bed that we've got in the pack and I used it in this kind of like nice blue bed swatch kind of color. I felt like it went really nicely with the wallpaper. And then in here as well, we have a little chest of drawer area. Actually, no, we have two chest of drawers areas because I was thinking there needs to be somewhere in this house for this household to store all of their like towels and dressing gowns and you know all of their comfy clothes and you, you flannels and you know the gist what I'm talking about and so I always imagine that this chest of drawers just is filled with everyone's bath towels and you know like clean ones to use and for some reason it's placed into the parents bedroom there was a perfect space for it and so I used the space for it but as well in this bedroom we have a bookcase and then we also have a mirror and I think that's basically it but now as you can see I've actually now moved on into the last area of this house which is the hallway and so in the hallway there is a little chess table as well as a little rocking chair and like side tables and whatnot but anyway guys I have actually reached the end of this voiceover so as always you can download this build via the gallery. My origin ID is JessicaPyYT or you can just search for the hashtag JessicaPyYT or just the hashtag JessicaPy. As always, thank you guys so much for watching this video and as always, if you do like my content then please do subscribe and hopefully I will see you in my next Sims 4 speedbuilding video. Bye guys! Bye.